How's it going everybody? Hope you're all doing well. So I have the entire bug out bag laid out here. And in this one, we are going to go through everything. So I'm gonna discuss specifically why do I put certain items in. I am gonna go in extreme detail on specifically each item in a way and discuss why I place that in here or in my pack. What reasons does it have to be in here. So it's probably gonna be a little bit lengthy of a video, but if you guys like that kind of stuff and want to know the details of why I'm placing things in here, what have I done, what my modifications are, this is pretty much gonna be the video for you. Now, to set it up, this bag right now is meant for 150 miles plus or 10 days, roughly, to get me home or to get to my bug out location. That's what this entire bag is specifically designed for. So I'm in the Northern United States. So it is a little bit cold. This is the summer loadout. So it is meant to be a warmer-ish climate, but we can still see colder temps. So that's kind of the premise of this specific pack. Why do I have so much layers, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. So getting into it immediately, the bag right here, this is a Hyperlite Mountain Gear Pack. This is a 4,400 Southwest. So this is a 60 liter pack that weighs two pounds, this entire pack. So the modifications that I specifically did to it to help me a little bit is I put some shock cord on the outside and mainly that's to lash other items or you know equipment or gear specifically my mat over there for sleeping on the thermo rest that slips in here i also put dump pouches on each side with velcro so these are meant to like you know pull them out and you can pl uh, place items here like if you are you know walking through a general area and you need to grab tinder material or say you're placing other items like your water purification set you maybe you just had to get out of the water or get away from it because an opposition was coming. Just easy to access dump pouches to put regularly used items for easy access. So this pack is pretty much outstanding. I really enjoy it. Uh, Dyneema composite or Dyneema Cuban fiber waterproof. It is a roll top. So that's the pack that I've been using specifically at the moment for a while i've had a 3200 model too or a 3300 i forget what it is but i needed something bigger so moving up from there i specifically carry leather gloves as well in here now this can be heavy a lot of people say no nah, you don't need that why don't you just uh you know use a multi-tool or something like that but i like protecting my hands especially when i'm using tools like a knife or a saw or going through processing wood if necessary, or picking up hot titanium or other items like that, this just makes it way easier. Just slip your hands in there and it'll keep the heat and it'll keep you protected. That is why I put these particular leather gloves in there. Are they heavier? Yes, could I ditch them? Yeah, I could probably go for you know these pig gloves, which I use for more tactical or moving through the environment because I like to protect my hands pretty much at all costs. That's why I put two sets of gloves in here. Different reasons, of course. This is more for movement basis, or if it does get a little chilly or a little colder, I like to have another layer on specifically my hands to keep that dexterity moving. I do have a small beanie here, mainly for nighttime use. Um, it does get a little bit chilly. Most of your heat is pulled out of your head, so I like to have this a little bit you know, for those evenings or even if it gets cold, I have that pretty much all year round considering the climate that I'm in. I also run pretty much always a boonie cap. Boonie cap is pretty much always on me to keep that, you know, heat out because it is vented up here at the top specifically. And then for itself is to keep that sun off my neck because I don't like sunburn. Next is a shemog, which has tons of different uses, right? It can be used as a towel, wipe your hands down. It could be a pre-filter for filtering specific really bad water. You could douse it with water and put it around your neck to keep your core body temperature very low. It can be an extra layer at night 
if you want to. There's just so many uses and uses for this that I always keep one in here. Now, of course, moving on to the rain poncho. This is specifically BDU or Woodland M81. Now, for my climate, this poncho works extremely well. Now, of course, I use this poncho as a my primary tarp and my poncho. You can collect water with this. You can wrap your pack in this if you're crossing a body of water. You can use this as a bivy if you want, if you're not gonna use it as a tarp. There's so many uses for that. That's why I carry the poncho over a dedicated tarp, to tell you the truth, because in my opinion, the, the poncho has way better uses behind it. So, moving up here at the top, this is a small backpack, or I think this is made by, let's see, let's EOG gear. This is extremely lightweight, two, bu two buckles, and this is meant for their sensitive site exploitation. You can like put, you know, all kinds of material, hard drives. This is meant for military use, an extremely small, tiny sack that you can pack away. And then, you know, if you have items that you need to grab throughout your mission, say you're grabbing Intel or maps or hard drives, you can throw that stuff in here and then you can hand it off to whoever you need. But the smart idea is carrying an extra pack regardless of having my massive pack, is what if I stash my pack somewhere and then I need to just go several hundred yards or several, you know, hundred meters or something like that and observe something. I don't want to take my whole pack with me because if I get compromised, that's a lot of weight that I'm going to be running with and I don't need. Or if I find extra items, say I come upon an establishment that is abandoned, but there's other items, you can pack this full of those smaller items if you go out on a run or you just find them and then with the shock cord on my pack i can stuff this bag in the shock cord and now i have extra volume of space in my backpack or you if you meet someone along the way or have a co-worker with you if you get stranded and they don't have a pack hey man here put your water in this you know stuff like that a smaller expandable lightweight backpack in my opinion is key in a pack to expand you know if necessary you know if you find extra items expansion and then you can come down from that or you can give it out as well moving down i have ipro here so it is sunglasses and it is clear ipro and then i have the tinted orange lenses or the yellow lenses now mainly this is for of course protecting your eyes but mainly at night when i go through my night vision which i'll talk about here in a second when you're traversing through material you know simple twigs and stuff like this in the middle of night will stick you in your eyes and that is a bad bad day so if you put on eye pro it can protect you especially if you're traversing through a lot of you know pines or material or you know shrubbery these will protect your eyes specifically at night when you can't see if you have to go at night that's mainly why i run the clear eye pro in here as well just the yellows they kind of uh, give more detail out as well now moving down i carry a little bit of surveyor's tape right here and this is meant for marking routes wherever i go if i say hey i want to mark you know a cash point or if i'm gonna stash something somewhere or i need to leave a message behind like hey i got stranded here let me attach this to a tree take my sharpie and write on it hey this is the direction i'm going hey this is my last known location or if i'm unaware of me going somewhere i'm gonna write on this as a marker so if i turn around and say hey i think i don't want to go this way i can traverse back see this orange tape attached to a tree or a shrub or a building or whatever it is and it kind of notifies and lets me know hey this was my last starting point this is where i was or it notifies other people hey if you see orange surveyors tape look for messages my specific family knows that i do this so they're looking for that specifically the general region of where i'm at now moving on down um, to tools. So I carry a Mora specific knife wrapped with red tape mainly. So if you drop it in the shrubbery, you can see red tape very easily. It's not just disappeared and gone. So this is 
Um, I forget which one this is. I think this is their black edition, which carbon steel, of course, and it's extremely lightweight. That's why I went with this, especially, specifically the Kydex or the plastic handle. Um, it won't retain moisture like leather does. Leather will retain moisture, and especially if you use it over time, it will rust. So that's why I went with this. Next is a Baco Laplander saw. Now, I do not carry an ax with me. It's too much weight, and it's, in my opinion, too loud on the ears. This is very easy. It goes down extremely lightweight, and it's easy to process wood if necessary, specifically sound-wise. If you're cutting through, you know, sawing through wood, it's very less noisy than you chopping with an ax. Now, different environments, I might take an ax with me, but this is extremely lightweight reasoning behind it. Moving into my electronics. So first off, I have a power film solar panel. Now this is a very small one, but I don't really need a lot to charge. Now I also have these uh, AA rechargeable batteries. I have lithium 123s and lithium AA's. Now to charge everything, I have a small battery bank right here. This is a battery bank, at least the solar panel itself is a battery bank too. So I can push energy in from the solar panel into this battery and then into this battery if necessary. Now I get it, there's a loss of electricity going through it, but overall I'm using means to hold on to electricity. Same with the double A's that are rechargeable. This Goal Zero battery pack allows me to do the same thing. I can charge the double A's through this. A lot of this, my items use double A's, specifically my flashlight down here, and my PVS-14 night vision device, which I use night vision, which some of you are familiar, if you're familiar with the channel, I run night vision because at night there are less people out. I can traverse, if I see at night, I can see you know, threats or other people or avoid people way easier. Now, of course, I have you know, the Rhino mount and then the J-Arm and then the Cry Precision nightcap, which is right here. Not the best solution and comfortability for night vision, but it definitely is very small, it compacts, it's lightweight, and it's better than running a full helmet in this, because a full helmet, even a bump helmet, you're talking maybe over a pound for everything. This doesn't even come close to that, or even two pounds for a helmet. Even if you go ballistic, then it's even way heavier, definitely not going down that specific road. Also, I have the compass modification or the compass built in so I can put the compass over my PVS-14 and I can navigate through my device as I'm walking or traversing. Helps out quite a bit. Um, and then assorted charging cables. And this is mainly to charge my Garmin device, which is always on me, and everything else like uh, CR or, uh, you know, Android charger, you have normal charger, there's all kinds of other stuff on here to charge different devices. Moving over to that flashlight, this is a black diamond flashlight. This has a specific beam, it has a flood, and then it has a red light. And then in the back of it here, it is also rechargeable with triple A's or you can plug it in from one of these battery packs or even the solar panel direct to charge this light. So it's indefinite light for me, and that's why I specifically chose it. Moving down, this is a Vortex Solo Monocular. Now, this is mainly for observation, especially if you're navigating or using navigation to your aid. Dead Reckoning is if you pick a point and you go to it, you can see stuff. This is a 10 by 25 monocular. Now, that will allow me to observe and see other things much better, specifically if I'm higher up and I need to see, maybe there's people moving around, do I need to see if they're hostile, non-hostile, should I avoid them? The, just being able to see better can allow you to make better decisions in the long run. So, moving down further, down to the bottom here, I'm gonna move over. So, this is a Hill People Gear Recon chest rig right here. This is what I run on my chest all the time. I'll probably run some photos and stuff like that, but this all has my backup means. So if I have to ditch my pack and I have to throw it off somewhere and hide it, at least this is still on me. Now this has you know particular items 
that I need, that I could survive just off of this. Of course, I'd rather have my pack with me, but it's a backup means. Now, this is a Silver Ranger compass right here. I have it Velcroed in, so it's easily, you can slide it in and out. That's prior, or my secondary means of navigation. If my watch would go down, because this is a full Garmin Tactics Delta Solar, and this is meant for you know navigation purposes and other stuff like that moving over i have a ferro rod wrapped in red duct tape because if you drop it you're gonna want to see where it is this thing is beefy i've used a lot of it it's starting to get wore down i should probably replace it but you know overall it works extremely well another means of fire starting which we're going to get into fire starting up there here is my flashlight or one of them i always edc this same exact flashlight um, on me. I actually don't have, have it on me. It's actually over by the truck right now because I took it off because <laughs> I am uh, running the waist belt straps to the pack, believe it or not. But I normally always carry that, but this is a backup means. So this takes CR123s, double A's and triple A's if necessary. So whatever I need in the battery department here, it'll fit in here and it'll run as a flashlight. Next is my right in the rain notebook. Now, of course, waterproof paper. Um, this works really well for taking notes. I have my pace count, uphill, downhill, my average pace count, meters, yards, conversions. There's full conversions over here. Distance traveled, um, known location, cache sites, other stuff like that that I've pre-established. Friends, addresses that I know I can get to if necessary points of interest around my general area. They're all in this book as uh, information. Next, I have a small um, Stedler non-permanent um, Lumo marker, and this is meant for writing on my maps, which I have maps in the back here, um, and I can write on my overlays. So you can write on your maps specifically where you're going. Also, I have a mechanical pencil and I have a normal pencil. I like mechanical pencils because the detail when you're writing on maps is extremely much better. I have one chem stick in here. This is a red one, and this is meant for 24 hours or a 12 hour chem stick actually. So then I can see within here or marking or other stuff like that. I also have pace beads in here as well. So if I am using my compass, pace beads along with my pace count will allow me a good distance that I have traveled coupled with my maps in the back here. Up front, I carry a Leatherman Wave Plus. Now, I like this because the uh, multi-tool aspect has a ton of different stuff. Of course, it's a multi-tool, but the pliers in general, I can pick up, you know, my, my hot titanium, you know, items and stuff like that if I need to and not get burnt. I can weave, I can sew with these. If I need to sew something on my pack, say a pack strap broke and I need to sew, helps out a lot also on it of course this one has you know a saw on it it also has a diamond file and a file so i can sharpen my other tools with it a normal knife and then this small you know saw which is also very helpful and all the other tools inside of it so this is a purpose tool specifically throughout my gear mainly for fixing or utilizing gear as well now I have these small little crystal light packets and that is meant for when I filter water, which we'll get to that in a little bit, it doesn't have that fishy taste to it anymore. It's kind of like, you know, it just helps and it makes it more pleasant. These things are stupid lightweight. They weigh literally almost nothing, but they will improve the taste of the water dramatically. Now in here in this Ziploc bag that I have, this is an extremely condensed small survival kit. Like I said, last ditch method. So I have lighter, you know, um, cutting tool, a way of fire, sewing, a way of purification, a flashlight, matches, you know, all types of different items, water purification tabs, a water bag, tin foil. There's all kinds of little stuff that I could survive off of this if I needed to. Now I wouldn't want to, this is a backup means, but in general, if I needed to, I definitely can. Also, I have a Garmin InReach, a satellite communicator on this. So when I turn this on, it's paired with my phone. I can text via satellite anywhere in the world as long as I have satellite coverage. So this normally rides on the outside. This is also rechargeable via the means over here that we just discussed. And it also has a Faraday bag and everything with it. I also carry about $400 cash 
mini chem sticks, so you can utilize light but very small, and you can charge, you know, your uh, watch, your luminescence of your watch, or other your uh, put one in your compass at night so you can see. And then also smaller snacks. These are our, you know, granola bars. These are the almonds gold. These ones are crazy lightweight, but they have 210 calories you know, per um, bar. And these are crazy lightweight. I went with the lightest amount possible. On the exterior here, these are um, the 10 speed blue Alpha Gear mag pouches. So you can use this as just putting whatever retained items, random items you can just shove in there. Or you can use it as magazines for particular weapon systems if necessary, depending on your scalability. Is it bad enough that you need a weapon system with you? Well, I always carry a weapon system, which I'm gonna go through here in a second, but if I have to scale that up to a rifle, where do you put your rifle magazines? Especially when you're running a backpack with waist belt straps, you're kinda SOL. But this allows you to run a heavier loadout if necessary. Now in the back here, I have my specific maps and then also some uh, blue diamond almonds these are crazy high calories and then also these power crunch bars crazy high calorie really good for you along with a holster for a particular firearm that uh, i'm not going to show because youtube kind of dislikes that but it is a 10 millimeter glock specifically it's the 29 also it has an ir capable flashlight and a white light with it so if i am running my night vision I can engage through IR illumination and laser through night vision with my weapon system. Day or night, doesn't matter, I can utilize it. Cool, so that's pretty much my um, last means or my chest rig or the Hill People Gear chest rig in general. On the bottom here, I also carry a tourniquet, mainly just because you know that is a life-threatening based uh, item that you may need if you are having your life threatened by a cut or a wound or something there's also one that i forgot to mention on the external of my pack over here moving down into trauma-based medicine now this is a full trauma kit that i have here wound seal kit it has israeli bandage it has a quick clot a compression bandage gloves and duct tape now this is in a uh, Ziploc bag, which I will uh, re pull out and replace uh, about every six months because they tend to get punctured over time, but it's extremely lightweight. Now moving into the smaller aspect or smaller kit, first aid based stuff. I always carry a small amount of hand sanitizer mainly to keep cleanly out there, especially before you eat and other stuff like that or you know bathroom or other stuff like that. You want to keep those germs, especially if you're in a high risk you know, high stress situation, you don't want to be getting sick. I also have some basic antibiotics if necessary. So basic stuff that can handle if you would get majorly punctured or a wound from getting, you know, germs or bacteria or other means or getting it infected. This is a basic means to establish that along with the material to know what to take, how much to take, what to take it for, other stuff like that. Here's a small, what I would consider a combat pill pack. Has all your needs, you know, aspirin, ibuprofen, you know, anti-diarrheals, other stuff like that that are necessary. Along with, um, man, what is that? I can't think of it off the top of my head. It's terrible that I do this all in one take, but um, antibacterial gel, pretty much. Uh, antibiotic ointment, that's what it is. Hard to do this all in one take off my mind, <laughs> but it definitely helps. Here's a small blister kit as well, because if you're gonna be traversing, especially long distances, your feet are going to take a beating, especially if you're not used to it. If you're not used to going 20, 25 miles a day in your shoes, you're going to need, you know, Luco tape, which is what I carry here as well, and a blister kit. I also have a small dental kit in here, because mainly teeth and feet are like your main pain that in my opinion will stop you dead in your tracks because of pain teeth and blisters or specifically your feet. Now I wear contacts and glasses so of course I'm going to carry small antibiotic ointment in case I would get a puncture or something stuck in my eye. It's not going to get infected. I carry extra contacts and an extra way to clean them if necessary along with a toothbrush, a small scalpel, 
I carry body glide in here as well for those friction points, especially when you're walking, not used to it. Those friction points are going to heat up and it's going to be miserable, along with a small bottle of Gold Bond. Same reasons, friction, heat, and moisture. You want to dissipate all of those. Next, I carry a small bottle of camp soap, mainly again for cleaning up if you know I don't want to use my hand sanitizer, which you can also use this to start a fire if necessary as well. There's also different types of stuff that are necessary. Now here is some uh, ibuprofen. This is 800 milligrams per, um, specifically uh, per pill. That's gonna get you through a lot more specific, you know, wounds or other things like that if necessary try to get out of the light the sun's kind of goofily kind of coming in here but i can't really change that out too much so we're just going to have to run with it so moving over here this is the bathroom kit so specifically it has an aluminum trowel this is the deuce of spades i think is what it's called but it's meant for you know digging a cat hole and then i have a small amount of toilet paper Along with that, I have two means of cordage. It is not paracord. This is 150 pound test, lighter weight, but it really does the same amount. I have never needed to use 550 cord in its entirety in a pack like this. Now, could there be scenarios that I need it? Yes, of course, but for the weight, this is a quarter of the weight, but it's a 150 pound test, which is pretty good. If you need more, double it up. Moving over to that, over to this. Specifically, this is a game kit or a game processing kit. So if I would take, you know, smaller animals or even a larger animal along my journey, how do I process them and keep the meat maybe for a little bit longer? So there is salt in there, a lot, quite a bit of salt that's laid inside of it. And then also multiple Ziploc bags so you can put the meat in, salt it up really good, and it may last a little bit longer, especially if you cook it first or you don't cook it. It's all kinds of different means of just uh, giving that lifespan of that meat a little bit longer. Moving over, this is my fire kit. I have a lot of means of fire in here. Mainly the, the high points, of course, is a lighter with red tape, so you can see it if you drop it. But I also carry a candle in here, so one light, light the candle, and now you have a source of fire, not constantly using your lighter over and over and over again, dissipating it. A candle will help out too, especially if you are super wet and cold. If you drape your poncho over you, maybe up against a tree, you're in a fetal position. If you put that candle in there, you would be amazed how much one little candle heat, like how much heat will come off of that candle when you're freezing cold in the middle of the night. One candle in general is awesome. Vaseline and cotton balls right here, of course, tried and true, and it absolutely works. Moving up from here, or from that, is a um, perimeter kit. So this takes 209 primers, and there are four in here. So you can line these out from tree to tree using Kevlar cord or other cordage that you have, which is why I have a lot of that cordage. You can stretch these out through different means or avenues of approach. My legs are getting a little bit tired here, but different avenues of approach. So if an adversary would come upon you, you're going to get a notification of, hey, that direction, that is where um, something is coming from. And then you can take these down later out after you wake up and then traverse to your next location. It's a means of perimeter defense or auditory. Now moving on here is a smooth, uh, small can opener, one of the P58s, or pre, I think they're P38s, one of the two, one's a larger one, and then a small signal mirror as well. Here's an IR strobe. This is meant to be used for marking things or other people, especially coworkers or friends of mine that also have night vision. I can put this on and say, hey, do you see my IR strobe? IR strobes can definitely be seen from an immense distance. I'm talking mile, 20 miles out. You can see some of these, depending on your environment, your location, you know, environmentals around you. Here's a small Altoids can with an entire fishing kit. Been debating about taking this out, but it's a means of procuring food along the way, along with these speed hooks. The military uses these as well, but these are a means of passively 
fishing. So you don't have to actively be there yourself. You can be, you know, getting firewood or tending to other needs or something like that while this is fishing for you. I like things that work with you or while you're doing something else. You're like kind of maximizing the amount of time that you can be doing something along with other items. Here's a small fix-it kit. Now this is fix-it kit is meant for gear items. So I have you know, buttons, Velcro, Kevlar cord, a sailing needle, adhesive in here, you know, duct tape, there's uh, shoe goo in here, um, brass wire, zip ties, a lot of other stuff that you can use to fix your packs, so specifically if they get damaged and you need to fix them. All right, so we pretty much went down through this entire row. So let's uh, flip over to uh, water, I suppose. We're gonna move over to the water base aspect and give my knees a rest right here. So, be free. Um, no, this is not a be free. This is a hydro pack, actually. So this is meant for two liters of water that I can put fresh water if necessary in here and transport it if necessary as well. I also have the Canuck Outdoors um, bag. This is for dirty water and this will directly connect up to my Sawyer Mini, which is what I use. So you can actually utilize this system on the move. If you're moving with your pack, I can attach this system to the back of my pack and as I'm hiking, it is filtering water for me, which is pretty a big deal, like I said, multiple things occurring at one time, so you're not completely burdened all the time by them. Water purification tabs. Now this also is housed inside a Ziploc bag or a mesh bag. So the mesh bag is used to put in the Sawyer Mini inside of it so it can breathe, it can air out, because if you keep a bunch of water trapped in there, bacteria normally likes to grow, and then in the winter time, you want to keep that close to you so it doesn't freeze. Specifically, that filter, the membrane will freeze, water expands, breaking your filter. So kind of keep that close to you, like armpit or chest or somewhere like that so it doesn't freeze. Throw it in your sleeping bag in the middle of the night if it's cold out. Moving down from there is my another water bottle. This is just a life water but it connects in very easily to this entire system. I'll probably show some footage of it or some photos of me connecting it all together and hiking with it. Works out extremely well. Very bottom down here. I'm actually gonna move over <clears throat> so you guys can see a little bit better. But down from there, right here is going to be just a small, um, this is just kind of like bubble wrap and uh, aluminum foil kind of mixed together and it's meant to keep my titanium cup from like getting rid of heat very quickly especially if I have you know a warm meal or something in there titanium is very conductive and um, is all is very quickly to reduce the amount of heat out of it it's just designed that specific way but I have a titanium cup Keith titanium container so you can boil water out of this, you can eat out of this, you can put water inside of this and boil out of it. It's multiple different uses. It seals it top on the top of it. You can hang it from something and boil if you don't want to stick it directly in the fire. Up from there is a titanium spork, so spoon and a fork of course everybody knows what that is, but it's a longer one to get further down into mountain house packs or other things like that. Below that right here that's going to be a titanium stove. I've always about debated about taking this in and out. Don't know if I'm actually going to bring it with me or whatnot, but I love it honestly so much and it works so well. It's almost like a rocket stove. It pretty much is and it heats up with twigs or other small stuff that you can find extremely easy and fast. And that's what I like is the quickness of it boiling water extremely quickly, especially if as a backup means if necessary. Up from there in the Benchmade um, pouch further up right here, these are extra glasses. Um, forgot to mention those while I was up there. So moving over to the right hand side over here. So these are Ranger Rolls. So they have a t-shirt, underwear, and socks. I have two of those along with um, Smart Wool underlayer long johns. I like wool based stuff and then a Smart Wool top. Um, that's mainly for sleeping and other stuff like that. I'd like to sleep in dry clothes, then transition back into the clothes that I wore the day before, and then keep traversing. Also, I have a military waffle top. This is a Gen 3 Level 2. 
I like that quite a bit. Let me come over to that side as well and then start discussing my sleep system in general. So the sleep system that I'm using. So I have several layers of how this specifically works. Now, this is a bivy. This is a snug pack special forces bivy on the outside of this. And then once you go further in, it is the Swagman roll from Helicon Text. This thing is an awesome piece of equipment too. Um, I like it, it can be used as a blanket, a hammock under quilt. It can be used as a, uh, a poncho over top of you. It has a hood. It's extremely warm. It works very well. It's a multi-base use. And then tailored with the Snug, or Snug Pack S, SF bivy, this can be used as a decent sleep system as well. Now inside this orange thing is a C to Summit sleeping bag liner reactor. This is a fleece and this should add about 25 degrees. Uh, I kind of see that sometimes, but not really. It's going to be less than that, but it's still going to add warmth, especially if you're fully layered up with your clothing and it is really cold at night, then you are going to get a lot more warmth back. Now I did a whole video on how, why this is packed like this and mainly because it's easy to get it packed up very quickly and get out if you really need to. I did a whole dedicated video. I'll probably uh, link it in the description box below how to get out of camp really fast. And I have it set up in these layers so I can roll up and get out. Now also I carry a full bug net that'll go over my entire sleep system because when the mosquitoes come out and black flies and other stuff like that, my goodness, they will carry you off, at least where I specifically am. This is extremely lightweight, doesn't weigh barely anything, but it is a tremendous plus, especially when you're trying to sleep. Next is a pillow. I have this small, I forget who makes this. I don't know if it's Sea to Summit, or I think it might be Thermarest, but this is a collapsible pillow. I like pillows in my kit, mainly because I sleep better. Better quality sleep means better quality of tasks the next day that I can accomplish because now I'm more motivated, I got more sleep, I can traverse better, I can think better. Better quality sleep equals better quality decisions and possibly getting yourself out of bad situations easier. Next is the Thermarest Z-Lite um, accordion mat. Now I like these, they're pretty bulky, a lot of people do not like them as well, but they just work for me. I throw them on the external of my pack and it just works very well. It keeps that heat in, but it's also compressible. It's not like a roll-up mattress, especially if you're in a hostile environment and you try to run with a, a mattress, a blow-up mattress, it's not very good. They get punctured very easy and you're running through the woods with this giant blow-up mattress if you need to leave immediately and you're getting it caught on stuff and you end up leaving it. So this accordion's down very quickly, very small. Gone, throw it in the pack. Under this is a snug pack um, roll top air valved bag. Now I use this to put all my stuff inside and it condenses down extremely easy. Lastly is gonna be food. I'm not gonna dig it out. I have a dedicated video, but I have about 13,000 calories in this bag right here. Um, I can up it, I can down it. it. Some of it needs water, some of it doesn't. But in general, 13,000 calories of specific food that I like. I'll link the description box, or I'll put the link in the description box below if you wanna know specifically what I am running food-wise. And then one last thing that I forgot to mention over here is some cordage and then also some carabiner clips. There's four of them, mainly for the tarp or my poncho to be a tarp over top of me. And it's adjustable, so you can kind of move it around to wherever you like. So I think that was everything, pretty much a brief, well, not really brief. This was a long, in-depth description of all the items that I carry and reasonably why I carry them, because that's the big thing is I get it. I see a lot of people carrying items, but why do you carry them? Actually, I forgot something else up top too. Um, passport and documents is up there at the top. So I have photos of loved ones, of myself, my kids. I have orders in there. I have passport, license. I have my Leosa. I have an extra badge and credential to prove who I am. Especially if you're in a grid down situation or a major situation, catastrophic, you need to be able to prove who you are. Like, hey, why are you coming in this city? Well, I live here. Okay, prove it, you know? 
how do you prove that at a checkpoint? Well, hey, look, here, there's my address, here's who I am, stuff like that. Okay, cool, be on your way, you know, stuff like that. Proving who you are can be definitely necessary in major situations. So other than that, I think I covered everything. There's probably a couple items I didn't really go over that I just skipped over accidentally, but that's pretty much all of it that I've gone into detail. If you guys like this kind of stuff and want to see more, and hear about it. I kind of went over everything, but there I can even go in more de detail per item if necessary, but some people don't like that kind of stuff. So definitely consider being a Patreon. Um, all my patrons have tons of access. I do exclusive content with them. They see stuff behind the scenes, all that kind of fun stuff. If you want to donate, there's definitely PayPal available, but if you don't want to do any of that, just like and subscribe. Honestly, that helps out a ton to the channel and gets you know this content out there and I like hearing from people so please comment like well, do you like this stuff I mean I get it this is a different setup this may not work for you all this kit and that's fine I'm just giving you guys ideas hey this is what I use this is what I'm running with you don't have to adopt this this is just maybe giving you things to think about like I said northern United States because if I was down in New Mexico or Florida this would probably be a little bit different. But other than that, that's all pretty much I have to say about it. I went through everything. So if you like it, like, subscribe, greatly appreciate it. And I hope you all have a great day.